With the Modern Warfare servers down yesterday when the global launch kicked off and people around the gaming world collectively laughing at the $100 Fallout First yearly subscription that offers features that should be available for the base price of the game after pushing out critical updates for a completely broken mess of a product. But there's a much worse thing that's both happening in the Call of Duty space and concerning a $100 digital item. However, unlike the Fallout First membership that gets you to a website that a fan got to before Bethesda could buy the domain and is basically a big giant fuck you to the company however that membership at least gets you multiple features and in-game items but call of duty mobile's halloween lucky draw which is definitely more trick than treat the opposite of the tagline in the blog post announcing the event in the first place but it only gives you one single digital item for the cost of ten thousand cod points or roughly 100 bucks it's actually closer to 80 if you buy the right bundles however to get all of the items in the set you'll need to throw down at least 190 dollars for the 23 000 580 COD points for the cost of the 10 items. Those numbers themselves without context are just staggering, but it gets far worse and more sinister the deeper that you dive into this system. Call of Duty Mobile's Halloween Lucky Draw is an RNG system similar to spinning a roulette wheel with different slices for each of the 10 prizes. A common shotgun skin, a rare backpack, a rare knife, a rare ATV skin, a rare MSMC skin, a rare M4 skin, an epic weapon XP card, an epic seasonal weapon crate, and the final two items, which are the most desirable desirable thus causing the most contention with an epic AK-47 skin and epic Outrider outfit. There are no duplicates in the wheel spin, however each spin increases exponentially in cost to the user. The first spin is 40 COD points, which is essentially 40 cents. Spin 2 is 80, spin 3 is 200, spin 4 is 400, spin 5 is 800, and spin 6 is 960 COD points, bringing the total to 2300, which you can get for 19.99 as a 24 400 COD points bundle that isn't all that terrible for six items in a free-to-play game. However, next is when things get completely out of control. Spin number seven jumps up to a whopping 1,600 COD points, which is roughly $15 for one spin. Then spin number eight is 3,000 COD points. That is 27 bucks if you bundle properly for one single fucking item. Then spin number nine is 6,500 COD points or $55 with the final. Spin number 10 at 10 10,000 COD points, which is just avarice run amok at $80 for one single spin of a wheel to grab the last item that hasn't yet been granted. Those are dizzying numbers I just threw out at you, and I apologize in advance, but there's going to be more math. The odds of each item on the wheel have also been disclosed. The common item, the shotgun, is at 12%. The chance of getting a rare item is 46%, and the chance of getting an epic item at 42%. Now, the odds are only relevant on this very first spin because the item that you end up receiving is then removed from the wheel, so the percentages will vary wildly based on what you're rewarded with, a point that it will come back to later. So here's where the scam and real sinister act comes into play. Based on the classification of the Weapon XP card, Weapon Crate, AK-47 skin, and Outrider outfit as all being epic, one would assume that the odds of getting any single epic item are the original 42% that they disclosed divided by 4, making it a 10.5% chance for any item with them getting a 25% split in the epic category. However, data miners have discovered that the odds of each item are not evenly split amongst the category, with the clearly less enticing weapon xp card and weapon crate getting 42 percent each the outrider skin is at three percent and the ak-47 skin is at two percent in the epic category to follow better along with the picture here's what the odds of getting each item on the first spin appears to be based on the disclosed odds and the item classification yeah it's kind of weird that an epic item has a higher percentage than a rare one but those are the odds that are disclosed to the user after all however this picture here is what the actual odds are based on the percentages gathered from data mines and since I don't quite know how the rare items are divvied up I'm just going to keep them at 9.2% for each of them but look at how the rare item chances have radically changed. The AK-47 skin and Outrider outfit now have tiny slivers of hope instead of the perceived 10.5% chance of earning one. Now those data mine numbers that I mentioned earlier don't add up to 100% because the last time I checked 42 plus 42 plus 3 plus 2 is just 89 so 
I'm not quite sure if these are to be believed. However, the anecdotal evidence of wheel spinning certainly seems to confirm that it is indeed much harder to obtain those two items, the Outrider outfit and the AK-47 skin, than the other two epic items. I've seen numerous wheel spin videos and in every single instance, those two epic items are always the last ones to be granted to the player. This effectively means that even though the odds disclosure says the chance of landing an epic item is 44%, they obfuscate the individual odds of each item within the epic rarity since they're not an identical 25% for each of the four epic items, but rather it's much more difficult to land on the most desirable items, that Outrider outfit and AK-47 skin. I bet if I look through 100 separate wheel spin videos, of which I did not, I would expect, based on the data mine numbers, that one person would have gotten the AK-47 first, and another one person out of 100 getting the Outrider skin first. However, there are no such videos that I've seen where this occurs. Additionally, those disclose odds are only for the first wheel spin, as once you take away one of the other items, how are the odds of getting those ones that you haven't obtained then recalculated? If I, for instance, get the M4 skin first, does that mean that each of the rare items gets a 1.84% increase on the next spin, or there's some other mathematical metric at play? Does it get evenly distributed amongst all of the remaining items? What happens if I get the shotgun first? Does that 12% chance become evenly split across epic and rare items, or will the rare items get a higher bump than the epic ones? How about if the epic weapon crate is the first one off the board? Does its 19.32% odds get evenly split amongst the remaining rare items? Probably not. It's probably allocated based on those data mine odds, with the majority of it going towards the XP card, and then bumping the AK and Outrider ever so slightly up. There's a lot of scummy things going on here. The most egregious filament of which is that the disclosure of odds, even at the first spin, is very misleading in its entirety with classifying items with the same rarity getting different individual odds of obtaining them. The AK-47 skin and Outrider outfit should really have a completely different categorization than the weapon XP card and crate if they don't have the same individual odds. For instance, they should be labeled legendary and the legendary category should only have, based on the data mined evidence, a two or three percent chance of getting obtained on the first spin. It's designed to entice players into thinking that they actually have a decent shot at nailing one of those on the very first spin. That brings me to my next point. The RNG wheel itself might actually be rigged completely since I've never seen one of those two items go before for the last two spins on the wheel, which just percentage-wise doesn't make any fucking sense if you know anything about probability. That means you might have a 0% chance prior to spin number 9, which costs a recoculous 6,500 COD points or $55 to obtain one of those two items. Now, this is purely speculative based on small sample sizes, but if true, this is even worse than the purposeful misclassification of items. Not to mention that the odds that are disclosed are completely misleading on any spin that's not the first spin because even though it says subsequent spins will grant you a higher chance of getting these items with one of them removed out of the loot pool it doesn't tell you how the odds get skewed or it doesn't tell you where that percentage of the looted item then gets distributed amongst the remaining ones going back to the cost of the individual spin that's another huge issue here nowhere is it disclosed that each subsequent spin will have an increased cost when you buy the first one which plays into multiple psychological tests tactics like first one free similar to drug dealers to get their clients hooked on a product by giving away the first one since they know that they're going to be repeat buyers similar to the first few spins of the game being a relatively benign cost of 40 then 80 then 200 cod points which the last one is what a normal supply drop would cost in other call of duty games and the sunken cost fallacy whereby people will spend more money than they're willing to in the first place because they've already been invested for either a period of time or money thus by the time you're getting to those later spins that it costs an insane amount of money, you're already in too deep. People are not going to balk at the thought of throwing down some more money for another wheel spin, even at those exorbitant prices, because they're already stuck in. Even if the odds that were disclosed were accurate and not deceptive, as I pointed out, telling people the chances of their RNG game does not curb problem gambling and isn't a useful tool for people that are prone to addictive behaviors like shopping or gambling. People know how shitty the odds of winning the lottery are, and yet many people people still play every single day. Same goes with spinning wheels or pulling levers for digital goods in a video.
video game. Tying these rewards to a limited time event is also a use of another psychological tactic called FOMO or fear of missing out since these in-game items are only going to be available for a certain time window before they are no longer obtainable thus people are going to want to get them before it's too late. This is Activision spelt with a dollar sign at its most scummy and if they wanted to prove to us that they don't want to be called Microtrans Activision anymore this certainly isn't the way to go about doing so. Even though Call of Duty Mobile has been a huge success and is making an astronomical amount of money it's still somehow not enough for greedy publishers like Activision and Tencent that need not just a shitload of money space balls but they need all of the money. This is why I exercise so much caution when reading the monetization blog posts regarding Modern Warfare because we've seen the story play out before and here it is again. I mean they're selling cosmetic skins for equipment like frag grenades and stuns that you barely ever get to see for fucking $17 which apparently is a 20% deal by the way no it's never a fucking deal when you get to control the economy of the digital good and by owning the storefront and currency exchange so fuck off with this false advertising bullshit of a sale there is a lawyer that has been aggregating instances of consumers being falsely led into purchasing spins on the Halloween lucky draw wheel over on reddit link to his post down in the description along with all of my sources as always i've been the schwanz 27 bouncing like titties in a baywatch intro until next time